Okay, well, a um, um, uh, message this morning on Mother's Day. Um, slightly different to what you'd expect from Michael on Sunday. Um, we, we often hear the Word of God expounded. Not doing a lot of that today. Why? Because it's a day when we stop for just a moment and honour mothers, grandmothers, great-grandmothers. You hear the phrase where it says that... Um, you know, with our young people, uh, the bank of the parents or the bank of the grandparents these days, where it's knock knock on the door um, for help, helpful, uh, uh, help the younger ones. Uh, a day of greeting, a day of expression of love, uh, not just here in Australia, but all over the world, all over the world. And uh, our telephone companies tell us that this is one of the most busiest days of the uh, of the year when um, people are ringing mum and, and I guess our, our gigabytes go down as we start sending emails and messages and everything else these days uh, and our shopping uh, sprees uh, are real uh, sentimentally um, part of our character, isn't it, to buy mum a little gift and say thank you. It is a, a lifetime task. Uh, never uh, are you not a mother when you've had children. Uh, the uh, problem is that they may be little and they need lots of hands-on and then they grow a little bit bigger and then they're into their junior teenagers and teenagers and before long they're uh, engaged and then married. Uh, but mum still wants to know what's happening and mum's often on the phone. Um, and the calls come back. What do we do in this, this situation, Mum? It's a difficult task. Um, I read this week that by the time a child reaches 18, it is estimated that a mother has done uh, an extra 18,000 hours of work for that child. The child generates uh, a lot of work. Uh, I calculated that that was about 19 hours a week. Now, th that is one child. Now, if you have two or three or four, wow, those hours build up. One mother once said this, the joy of motherhood is what a woman experiences when all the children are finally in bed. But true motherhood is a calling. It is a privilege. And uh, if valued correctly, it is a real pleasure to be a mum. The reality of life, I think I heard it said that long service leave for a mother is when suddenly the babies are out of nappies. That's long service leave. The reality of life is that it can be a very difficult time for some. Many uh, women would have loved to become a mother, but for some reason or other, they just could not. There are those who may not have had the best mother in the world and those who did but have lost them due to death and circumstances. There are those who have lost children and others who carry the guilt of wayward children but still mothers. I remember being in... Um, working in, in the hospital in Tamworth and I had this call from a... Uh, uh, one of the social workers, and a mum who had a stillbirth the day prior to that. And she wanted the baby baptised. And um, within 20, 25 minutes, I had to do a service in the chapel. And a guy just said to me, I just said to the social worker, I will be there, give me an hour. And uh, I said, please be there as well. And uh, a guy just said, go home, pick up your little blue booklet. Now, some of you people might know something about my little blue booklet. I brought it home. I wasn't quite sure what I had to pick it up for. I opened it, and there it was, a chapter about having lost a loved one. But there was one particular verse that really stood out to me. Matthew 18, verse 10, it said, See that you do not despise one of those little ones, for I tell you that their angels in heaven always see the face of my God in heaven. And I thought, wow, 
And when I looked at that passage, there were a lot of other cross-references to angels as well, which I read at the same time. But that was great comfort to the mum who had lost her baby. I remember the excitement of the first call I received from my eldest son and the excitement on that, that telephone call about um, his wife, our, our daughter-in-law, being pregnant, our first grandson. And there was great excitement, telephone calls going backwards and forwards, and it was only a week or so later, uh, another telephone call came through. Uh, and the problem was due to a genetic imbalance, which affects about 7% of our population here in Australia. And the child would, well, it ended up being a stillbirth, but had it been born, it would have died at birth due to the genetic imbalance of collagen in bones. And um, it is sad, but we have never forgotten that little child. And those little verses that speaks about the angels in heaven are amazing comfort to all of us. We need to be sensitive and to sympathise with anyone who has lost a child and let us not forget those beautiful women who although never had the opportunity to marry have decided um, dedicated their lives to caring for young children teachers missionaries those working for compassion and the compassion children those caring for children in orphanages our nurses working in children's wards and in uh, nurseries caring for the newborn. Working in Tamworth, um, we were caught up with the Premier babies. I don't know if you realise, but a Premier baby is as big as a borrow. And there's a program in Sydney where the mothers go into the hospital and they will stay there for one, two, three months as the child grows and gets to the point where the child can be released. But it's a very delicate program and even coming from Sydney to Tamworth you lose three or four days in that program and so they stay in the Tamworth base hospital again until they get back into the program and the child recovers, mum recovers and they're able to go off home into the northwest of New South Wales. A quote from an unknown mother when my children remember their childhood, I want only for them to remember that their mother gave it everything she had. She worked too much. She failed at times, as she did not always get it right, but she tried her hardest to teach them about kindness and love and compassion and honesty even if she had to learn it from her own mistakes. She loved them enough to keep going, even when things seemed to be absolutely impossible and hopeless. Even when life knocked her down, I want them to remember me as a woman who always got back up and loved them to the absolute end. Are you aware... Uh, that in France, 69 out of 69 kings, there were only three of those kings who were dearly loved by their subjects. And are you aware that those three kings were raised by their mothers? Not by tutors, not by guardians, their mothers. And there is a great saying from the emperor Napoleon, which we all know, the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. And Ralph Waldo Emerson, men are what their mothers make them. And the one that Michael really loves, the Spanish proverb, an ounce of motherhood is worth a pound of clothes. <laughs> now, I must admit, <laughs> this, this is the Spanish proverb. If you know anything about the history of Spain, well, you'll understand. However, you will also have to understand what an ounce is and what a pound is, because many of our young people probably will not. The difference a mother makes. Well, we heard last week a little of um, the Wesleys, John Wesley, Charles Wesley, in relation to revivals. Let me tell you about Susanna Wesley, a mother of 17, 17 children, two of which were John and Charles Wesley's. 
uh, mother, spend one hour each day praying for her children. In addition, she took each child aside for a full hour each week to discuss spiritual matters. So is it no wonder her children were used by God to bring blessings to all of England and the rest of the world? Yes, she needed some time out. We would all acknowledge that. And the children knew that when Susanna sat and put her apron over her head, that was her time out and no one was to interrupt her. But she had rules she worked to and the children knew the rules well. She rewarded politeness, she rewarded good behaviour and she punished any sign of stubbornness and selfishness in her children. She taught her children to pray as soon as they could speak. If she made a promise to her children, she kept that promise. And if a child freely confessed a sin, she didn't punish him. But rebellious behaviour was always quickly dealt with. The point is, she took her responsibilities as a godly mother seriously, and she saw her role in influencing her children for Christ absolutely crucial. So let us add a little body, substance, to uh, this message today, since it's Mother's Day. So let us do a little comparison in relation to God's sacrificial, steadfast love and the love of a mother. As a mother seeks to conceive her child, so does God. Mother finds a man, they get married, they share their intimacy. Well, God finds a spokesperson, proclaims Jesus, shares his um, preventive... <laughs> Prevenient grace. I shouldn't have used that word. It's too hard to pronounce for me. But 1 Peter 1.23 says this, For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. As a mother seeks to birth her child, so does God. By the time nine months has passed, the mother has endured morning sickness, back pain, kicking, uncomfortableness when sitting, lying, walking, and the list could go on. I know the ladies could add much to that list. God has patiently and mercifully endured his people in their unregenerate state as the unborn person. And John 3.3, 3, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. Nicodemus. So as a mother seeks to be with her child, so does God. Playtime, bouncing on the knee, on the floor, playing with the toys, singing lullabies, just growing close building a bond, building a connection. Knowing that God seeks to be with me gives me great confidence and value. It reminds me, as it should all of us, that I am precious to him, we are precious to him. The creator of the universe seeks to be with each one of us and he wants those special times with each one of us. Genesis 3, 9, you'll know it. Then the Lord God called out to Adam, Where are you? James 4, 8, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. And as a mother seeks to nourish her child, so, so does God. Feeding a child, especially if a mother feeds the child herself, is a very close enduring experience for her and the child. There's more to it. Encouraging them, giving them attention, praising them. Many times we have seen God providing all our needs, knowing God has our best interests at heart. Gives us great nourishment for the journey 
it is good for us to look back and see how God has guided and directed us and how we've changed some of our thought processes, how we've said, hmm, maybe I could have done that better. But God is there in the midst guiding us and looking back. I know we're, we're looking um, on Tuesday with uh, a group of, I don't know, six, seven, eight, nine, depends who comes, Joseph and Jacob. When you look at the hardships and what they endured, but the plan that God had was going to be fulfilled. Matthew 6, 33, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. And as a mother seeks to protect her child, so does God seek to protect us. Mothers establishes healthy boundaries in play, in friends, hobbies, intimacy, leading them in the right paths, warning of dangers. A child holding a mother's hand will venture into many unknown territories and fear no evil. According to the Psalms, God is our rock. He is our fortress. He is our deliverer, strength, shield, strong tower, strong refuge. And Psalm 17, 8 says this, Keep me as the apple of your eye and hide me under the shadow of your wings. As a mother seeks to empower, to equip her child so does God. Mothers, they educate children and babies in reading and writing and arithmetic, homemaking skills. They teach responsibilities, choices and consequences. When I go to God asking him for wisdom, he never fails. Sometimes it takes a while, but as I continue to seek, he continues to give. And John 14, 26 says this, But the counsel of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. He said that to his disciples, but he says that to us today. And as a mother seeks to purpose and destine her child, so does God hopes for a child to live a long and prosperous life and pass the family heritage on to the next generation. Many of us find our identity and what we do of where we live. Our true identity is to be found in God's purpose and destiny for our lives. In relation to this, our earthly occupation and our earthly residence is of secondary importance. So let us remember Colossians 3, 1 to 2. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your heart, set your minds on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God and set your minds on the things above, not on earthly things. So to finish today, I'm going to summarise it in a prayer. So please pray within your heart this prayer. Father, we thank you for Jesus, that he died on the cross instead of us. We thank you also for choosing his mother Mary, who raised him perfectly to do your will and then watched him die for us on that cross. Although we want to applaud all the mothers who take the task seriously, we bring before you the moments, the mothers who do not. We remember, too, the women who cannot have children, and we pray for those who have lost loved ones. We pray, too, for all those who cannot enjoy Mother's Day because of strife in their families. Father in heaven, be with each and every mother today and make their day a very special day to remember. And we ask this, Lord, in the name of your precious Son, Jesus. Amen.